folks, this is Fred from CR Machine and uh, I just want to put together this quick little instructional video on how to install uh, the uh, compression release in one of our uh, Fred heads. <laughs> um, so I'm doing this alone, just bear with me. This is very low tech here in the shop. I just found a little place where it's pretty light here at the end of this lane. Um, here's one of my... Um, single spark plug heads with a compression release hole here on the side uh, and a compression release valve. This valve fits into this hole here, the side hole, angled hole. And there's a, we, we install the cable and the handle to the valve first before we put the valve into the head. So, let me see if I can get this camera a little closer so we can get a better view of what is happening here, okay? All right, now, this is where my hands will be working. We'll zoom it up a little bit, okay. All right, hopefully that's gonna be, ah, hopefully that'll be okay, okay. Okay, so. First, we've got our standard spark plug socket, which came with the engine kit. That will be used. And you get the kit. I got all the stuff out. Little Allen wrench, a hex wrench. This steel bushing comes with the kit, but we don't use it for our applications for the motorized bicycle. Okay, so first what we do is... Um, shall do is take the cable and ensure that this adjustment here is all the way collapsed as as compact as it can get and then we're going to install this um, the loose end of the cable into the valve and first we have to align you'll see here's the uh, set screw that goes and in, screws into the body of the valve. We're gonna not remove it, but we're gonna back it off so it doesn't interfere with getting the cable end in. And then we have to rotate these components so it's easy to insert. So there's the aluminum one, that's easy. But there's a little steel one here, this spring seat at the base of the spring. You can see a little, a little cutout right there and that's where the cable must pass through as well. So there's actually three components that have to be aligned. And now I'm screwing the aluminum um, spring retainer there on the end. Okay, so now they're all aligned. Now, <clears throat> should be able to make sure the cable isn't frayed. As long as you haven't buggered it up and it's stock, out of the box it should be nice okay there we go we're putting it through well, I'm hitting something maybe it's the set screw there we are okay all right so now you can see the cable is peering through the little vent hole well I gotta stick a little small tool in there try to maneuver the cable out yeah, there we go. Okay, so now, now, uh, now the cable is uh, installed into the valve assembly. Now, before tightening it, uh, don't want to tighten it yet. We're gonna actually gonna have to give us a little bit of slack so we can install the handle. The handle has to be installed, and the whole thing has to be basically adjusted before installing the valve into the head okay so now the uh, now the handle is installed now what I like to do is um, with this adjustment fully collapsed the cable needs to be screwed in uh, tightened secured when there is an adequate amount of clearance allowing you to 
remove the valve if if you need to because there are times when you want to remove the head or something like that and 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 you want to actually fully remove the head off the engine what you'll do is you'll with this operating valve of a lever attached to your handlebars you can you can do this with the cable and just boom remove the cable and then you can remove the the the, the cylinder head with the valve installed but leaving the handle on your handlebars so this adjustment here is is correct oh well one now tighten the valve I'm just gonna just snug it up just a little bit I'm gonna double check to make sure that this adjustment's right because once you tighten this screw down hard you're gonna mash the cable a little bit and it's gonna make uh, adjust further adjustment in the future a little more difficult so to minimize those difficulties oh yeah easily easily installed easily installed now oh, there's a there's a little bit of slack there a little too much slack maybe that's okay better than not enough uh, because then you'll have difficulties removing the valve and that's what this little adjustment is for so if you want to adjust it a little bit tighter that's fine now there oh. oh I didn't I didn't tighten it enough okay well, let's try again Collapsing this adjustment again. I want to make sure there's adequate slack so that I can remove the handle. That looks right. Little, yeah, see there. Easy, easily removed. still remove it oh yeah oh yeah okay so now we'll tighten it fully that's what I should have done a moment ago there now it's tightened it's not gonna move now and here's your operation of the valve I don't know if you can see it yep there it is there's the operation of the valve now when you install the um, the uh, the valve on your bike uh, only have it so the Mac you know you don't want to have to you don't want the valve to open up like like an eighth of an inch that's that's far too much uh, than necessary to give you uh, good compression release results and and slowing of the bike um, you know the valve uh, through my own testing works very well even when it's only open just a bit just the sixteenth of an inch uh, and that would also it, it, when it's adjusted like that so the valve doesn't open too far it also ensures that this valve poppet does not hit the piston because as you can see it's this is compression release is installed on the the the, the, the angled hole and um, the piston does come close so um, now now you can adjust this, you can turn it in a way so that it tightens up the cable just a little bit. And now, and that's, that would be your complete adjustment. Um, but now we want to get the valve installed into the head, so I'll collapse this again. And remove this valve, uh, the valve uh, lever, operating lever that is. Now, with the cable installed to the valve, you can now install the valve into the head. Uh, you can trim some of this cable if you desire. Um, the way I do it is by, by placing the, um, the cable on a piece of rugged steel and I'll actually take a chisel and just bang and it just severs it just like that but you know I'm just not gonna bother with that right now 
because I don't have those tools together with me right now to show you that little technique. Um, using diagonal cutters or something like that, that doesn't really work. This is a high quality cable. It's not like the little clutch cables you get on your uh, engine kits. Um, this is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's like spring steel. <laughs> um, uh, use an abrasive wheel or that, that method using the chisel, a sharp chisel, placing the cable on a piece of steel, like see on the end of this heavy bolt or, or a plate of steel. And, um, and you just put the chisel there and, and bang it with a hammer and, and make a nice clean cut. But see what I'm doing? I'm just bending it around like that. And it's, it's fine. Okay, and this little aluminum spacer that comes with the kit, this is the spacer that spaces the valve to the uh, appropriate um, distance. So what we use is this spark plug socket. And, and I actually like the ones that came originally with your little uh, China Girl engine kits. It's sheet metal, um, and it fits. Well, you just slip it over the cable. All right. And there, you can you see you can only install it just a little ways because it, it'll hit the, the set screw, but that's okay. It's got enough bite onto the hex to uh, torque. Put the spacer on. And there we are. Screwing it in. Ah, get that compressed air line out of there. I'm taking this video in the machine shop. <laughs> Excuse the mess. It's a very active little shop here, mine screwing it in and then with a screwdriver or other suitable tool um, <clears throat> torque it <sighs> there <sighs> take, take off the socket and there you are <sighs> there it is right there Ta -da! there's your compression release installed and now you can uh, put on the handle or you'd mount the handle on your bike and then you'd put this on your engine and route your cable and then you'd come around to where you have it attached to your handlebar I I have it a thumb control on for my left hand that's how I prefer to do it so the clutch is with your fingers compression release with your thumb left hand and uh, And then here, here's the cable end again. Just go like that. There. And then you can adjust out a little bit with the tensioner. And, and there you have it. There's the valve. See it? See it operating? There it is. Okay. And then here. Now, you can see it there. There it is. And this, you see this little bit of opening? That's all you need. That's all you need. Uh, I found opening it even more doesn't really give you any added uh, breaking. It just, you'll find that just a small crack of the valve is it's all you need. And you'll, you'll get that Jake break effect. So, I hope that was helpful. Uh, for you folks, um, what I'm trying to do uh, for people buying these is that I, I will install these. These heads will be furnished with the valve, pre-installed and adjusted. But um, just in case you have to make adjustments or something, I don't know. It, you've got this video to clear up some of the uh, confusion that you might have on on how to install the compression release. Okay, before we go, I'm going to take you over to my blue bike, and I want to show you something about about the chain tensioner. If you're getting a compression release, you have to have the right kind of chain tensioner for your engine. 
Okay, here we are at the bike. You can see this is a rigid chain tensioner setup. It's not the stock setup, which is a clamp that you'd put like right here. Uh, you know, I haven't tested those out. Those are a little flimsy, so I got rid of those a long time ago. And, and I use this sort of thing. I make a piece of flat stock, I slot it, weld it up, and I have my own chain tensioner. Um, you can buy good um, idler sprockets for chain tensioning purposes. Because the, of the, com the nature of the compression release, it al allows your engine to do the braking for your rear brakes. It, it does some of the braking uh, for the rear. And a spring-loaded tensioner, like a shift kit, or other tensioning devices will not work. So just so you know, don't get a compression release if you want to run a shift kit or or, or other spring-loaded tensioning devices. It won't work. It has to be a rigid, uh, a rugged, rigid uh, chain tensioning setup. And, and this bike has the uh, the same head that you saw me install. Um, single spark plug. This is stock ignition. I'm having trouble with my twin ignition. Um, must be the brand of CDI or something. It doesn't want to doesn't want to run. Uh, it, uh, it's causing the timing to be off. Or haven't figured that one out yet. So that's it's a work in progress. A lot of this stuff here at CR Machine is a work in progress. I mean, you guys are getting stuff that's that's really new. I mean, it's really new and and. Uh, you know, the a lot of testing has gone into these heads. We're we're pretty happy with the heads, but certain things like twin ignition, uh, we don't offer ignition kits yet. We're still working on trying to figure out how to make a good ignition system ourselves. Uh, this uh, I just wanted to point this out while we're on the video. Check out the Delordo um, uh, PGBH. I think it's a PGBH carb clamp-on connection type carb onto our plenum 19 millimeter yeah yeah we're gonna be testing that out soon that's the next stage in uh, in evolution for uh, from the CR machine motors this intake now will come with two different spigot options one the 19 millimeter for the stock carburetors that you're that you know well and uh, a 24 millimeter uh, spigot diameter to fit these nice Delordo uh, PGBH carbs so hope you like that video I hope it helps okay good luck on all your bike projects everybody bye now